Hello friends, welcome back to the Healing Word ASMR. My name is Dee and I will be relaxing you by reading God's Word in a soft spoken voice along with some overly trigger sounds to help calm down your mind. So before we begin, let's dive into some prayer time, centering ourselves, connecting with the Spirit, and asking the Lord to work in our hearts. Gracious Father, I look back at my life, and in retrospect, I see that every hard thing, every challenging thing, every good thing, was all planned, predestined, and you saw everything before time. And looking back, there is no worry. There is no confusion. I see your hand in all you have done in my life. I pray, Father, for my friends here who are facing hard times, lonely times, good times. I pray, Father, that even though when we are up close to our circumstance and un unable to understand, see the full picture, that we can look forward, Lord, knowing that you are in control. Nothing is out of your hands. Nothing is too far out of reach. And we can trust you and we get to glimpse into your character, into your heart as we open your word, knowing that you care so very deeply for us, your children. And so, Lord, we ask you, we pray to you, worship you, that you would leave us not the same, that our day would be glorifying you, none of this in vain. No. Give you the glory in this Father, give you the glory in Jesus' name. When one of you has a grievance against another, does he dare go to law before the unrighteous instead of the saints? Or do you not know that the saints will judge the world? And if the world is to be judged by you, are you incompetent to try trivial cases? Do you not know that we are to judge angels? How much more, then, matters pertaining to this life? So, if you have such cases, why do you lay them before those who have no standing in the church? I say this to your shame. Can it be that there is no one among you wise enough to settle a dispute between the brothers and that before unbelievers? To have lawsuits at all with one another is already a defeat for you. Why not rather suffer wrong? Why not rather be defrauded? But you yourselves wrong and defraud even your own brothers. Or do you not know that the unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of God? Do not be deceived. Neither the sexually immoral, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor men who practice homosexuality, nor thieves, nor the greedy, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor swindlers will inherit the kingdom of God. And such were some of you. But you were washed. You were sanctified. You were justified in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and by the Spirit of our God. All things 
things are lawful for me, but not all things are helpful. All things are lawful for me, but I will not be enslaved by anything. Food is meant for the stomach, and the stomach for food, and God will destroy both one and the other. The body is not meant for sexual immorality, but for the Lord, and the Lord for the body. And God raised the Lord, and will also raise us up by His power. Do you not know that your bodies are members of Christ? Shall I then take the members of Christ and make them members of a prostitute? Never. Or do you not know that he who is joined to a prostitute becomes one body with her? For as it is written, the two will become one flesh. But he who is joined to the Lord becomes one spirit. But he who is joined to the Lord becomes one spirit with him. Flee from sexual immorality. Every other sin a person commits is outside the body. But the sexually immoral person sins against his own body. Or do you not know that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit within you, whom you have from God? You are not your own, for you were bought with a price. So glorify God with your body. Chapter 7 Now concerning the matters about which you wrote, Is it good for a man not to have sexual relations with a woman? But because of the temptation to sexual immorality, each man should have his own wife, and each woman her own husband. The husband should give to his wife conjugal rights, and likewise the wife to her husband. For the wife does not have authority over her own body, but the husband does. Likewise, the husband does not have authority over his own body, but the wife does. Do not deprive one another, except perhaps by agreement for a limited time, that you may devote yourselves to prayer, but then come back together again, so that Satan may not tempt you because of your lack of self-control. Now, as a concession, not a command, I say this. I wish that all were as myself am, but each has his own gift from God, one of one kind and one of another. To the unmarried and the widows, I say that it is good for them to remain single, as I am. But if they cannot exercise self-control, they should marry. For it is better to marry than to burn with passion. To the married, I give this charge, not I, but the Lord. The wife should not separate from her husband. But if she does, she should remain unmarried, or else be reconciled to her husband and the husband should not divorce his wife. To the rest I say, I and not the Lord, that if any brother has a wife who is an unbeliever, and she consents to live with him, he should not divorce her. If any woman has a husband who is an unbeliever, and he consents to live with her, she should not divorce him. For the unbelieving husband is made holy because of his wife, and the unbelieving wife is made holy because of her husband. Otherwise, your children would be unclean, but as it is, they are holy. But if the unbelieving partner separates, let it be so. In such cases, the brother or sister is not enslaved. 
God has called you to peace, or how do you know, wife, whether you will save your husband? Or how do you know, husband, whether you will save your wife? Only let each person lead the life that the Lord has assigned to him and to which God has called him. This is my rule in all the churches. Was anyone at the time of his call uncircumcised? Let him not seek circumcision, for neither circumcision counts for anything, nor uncircumcision, but keeping the commandments of the Lord. Each one should remain in one condition in which he was called. Do not be concerned about it, but if you can gain your freedom, Avail yourself of the opportunity. For he who is called in the Lord as a slave is a freed man of the Lord. Likewise, he who is free when called is a slave, a slave of Christ. You were bought with a price. Do not become slaves of men. So, brothers, in whatever condition each was called, there let him remain with God. Now concerning the betrothed, I have no command from the Lord, but I give my judgment as one who by the Lord's mercy is trustworthy. I think that in view of the present distress, it is good for a person to remain as he is. Are you bound to a wife? Do not seek be free. Are you free from a wife? Do not seek a wife. But if you do marry, you have not sinned, and if a patrolled woman marries, she has not sinned. Yet those who marry will have worldly troubles, and I would spare you that. This is what I mean, brothers. The appointed time has grown very short. From now on, let those who have wives live as though they had none, and those who mourn as though they were not mourning, and those who rejoice as they were not rejoicing, and those who buy as though they have no goods, and those who deal with the world as though they had no dealings with it. For the present form of this world is passing away. I want you to be free from anxieties. The unmarried man is anxious about the things of the Lord, how to please the Lord. But the married man is anxious about worldly things, how to please his wife. And his interests are divided. And the unmarried or betrothed woman is anxious about the things of the Lord, how to be holy in body and spirit. But the married woman is anxious about worldly things, how to please her husband. I say this for your own benefit, not to lay any restraints upon you, but to promote good order and to secure your undivided devotion to the Lord. If anyone thinks that he is not behaving properly toward his betrothed, if his passions are strong, and it has to be. Let him do as he wishes. Let them marry. It is no sin. But whoever is firmly established in his heart, being under no necessity, but having his desire under control, and has determined this in his heart, to keep her as his patrol, he will do well. So then, he who marries his betrothed does well, and he who refrains from marriage will do even better. A wife is bound to her husband as long as he lives. But if her husband dies, she is free to be married to whom she wishes, only the Lord. Yet, in my judgment, she is happier if she remains as she is, 
And I think that I too have the Spirit of God. Chapter 8 Now concerning food offered to idols, we know that all of us possess knowledge. This knowledge puffs up, but love builds up. If anyone imagines that he knows something, he does not yet know, as he ought to know. But if anyone loves God, he is known by God. Therefore, as to the eating of food offered to idols, we know that an idol has no real existence, and that there is no God but one. For although there may be so-called gods in heaven and on earth, as indeed there are many gods and many lords. Yet for us there is one God, the Father, from whom are all things, and for whom we exist, and one Lord, Jesus Christ, through whom are all things, and through whom we exist. However, not all possess this knowledge, but some through former association with idols, eat food as really offered to an idol, and their conscience being weak is defiled. Food will not commend us to God. We are no worse off if we do not eat, and no better off if we do. But take care that this right of yours does not somehow become a stumbling block to the weak. For if anyone sees you who have knowledge cheating in an idol's temple, will he not be encouraged? If his conscience is weak to eat food offered to idols? And so by your knowledge, this weak person is destroyed. The brother for whom Christ died thus sinning against your brothers, and wounding their conscience when it is weak, you sin against Christ. Therefore, if food makes my brother stumble, I will never eat it, lest I make my brother stumble. Chapter 9 Am I not free? Am I not an apostle? Have I not seen Jesus our Lord? Are you not my workmanship in the Lord? If to others I am not an apostle, at least I am to you, for you are the seal of my apostleship in the Lord. This is my defense to those who would examine me. Do we not have the right to eat and drink? Do we not have the right to take along a believing wife? As do the other apostles and the brothers of the Lord and Cephas? Or is it only Barnabas and I who have no right to refrain from working for a living? Who serves as a soldier at his own expense? Who plants a vineyard without eating any of its fruit? Or who tends a flock without getting some of the milk? Do I say these things on human authority? Does not the law say the same? For it is written in the law of Moses, You shall not muzzle an ox when it treads out the grain. Is it for the oxen that God is concerned? Does he not speak entirely for our sake? It is written for our sake. Because the plowman should plow in hope, and the thresher thresh in hope of sharing in the crop. If we have sown spiritual things among you, is it too much if we reap material things from you? If others share this rightful claim on you, do not we even more? Nevertheless, we have not made use of this right. But we endure anything rather than put an obstacle in the way of the gospel of Christ. Do you not know that those who are employed in the temple service get their food from the temple? And those who serve at the altar share in the sacrificial offerings? In the same way the Lord commanded that 
those who proclaim the gospel should get their living by the gospel. But I have made no use of any of these rights, nor am I writing these things to secure any such provision. For I would rather die than have anyone deprive me of my ground for boasting, for necessity is built upon me. Woe to me if I do not preach the gospel, for if I do this of my own will, I have a reward, but if not of my own will, I am still entrusted with a stewardship. What then is my reward? that in my preaching I may present the gospel free of charge so as not to make full use of my right in the gospel. For though I am free from all, I have made myself a servant to all, that I might win more of them. To the Jews I have become a Jew, in order to win Jews. To those under the law I have become as one under the law, though not being myself under the law, that I might win those under the law. To those outside the law, I have become as one outside the law, not being outside the law of God, but under the law of Christ, that I might win those outside the law. To the weak, I became weak, that I might win the weak. I have become all things to all people, that by all means I might save some. I do it all for the sake of the gospel, that I may share with them in its blessings. Do you not know that in a race, all the runners run, but only one receives the prize? So run that you may obtain it. Every athlete exercises self-control in all things. They do it to receive a perishable wreath, but we an imperishable. So I do not run aimlessly. I do not box as one beating the air. But I discipline my body and keep it under control, lest after preaching to others I myself should be disqualified. Chapter 10 For I want you to know, brothers, that our fathers were all under the cloud, and all passed through the sea, and all were baptized into Moses in the cloud, and in the sea, and all ate the same spiritual food, and all drank the same spiritual drink, for they drank from the spiritual rock that followed them. And the rock was Christ. Nevertheless, with most of them God was not pleased, for they were overthrown in the wilderness. Now these things took place as examples for us, that we might not desire evil as they did. Do not be idolaters, as some of them were as it was written. The people sat down to eat and drink and rose up to play. We must not indulge in sexual immorality, as some of them did and 23,000 fell in a single day. We must not put Christ to the test as some of them did and were destroyed by serpents, nor grumble as some of them did and were destroyed by the destroyer. Now these things happened to them as an example, but they were written down for our instruction, on whom the end of the ages has come. Therefore, let anyone who thinks that he stands take heed lest he fall. No temptation has overtaken you that is not common to man. God is faithful, and he will not let you be tempted beyond your ability. But with the temptation he will also provide the way of escape that you may be able to endure it. Therefore, my beloved, flee from idolatry. I speak as to sensible people. Judge for yourselves what I say. The cup of blessing that we bless, is it not a participation in the blood of Christ? The bread that we break, is it not a participation 
in the body of Christ because there is one bread. We who are many are one body, for we partake of the bread. Consider the people of Israel are not those who eat the sacrifices participants in the altar. What do I imply then? That food offered to idols is anything, or that an idol is anything? No, I imply that what pagans sacrifice, they offer to demons, and not to God. I do not want you to be participants with demons. You cannot drink the cup of the Lord and the cup of demons. You cannot partake of the table of the Lord and the table of demons. Shall we provoke the Lord to jealousy? Are we stronger than he? All things are lawful, but not all things are helpful. All things are lawful, but not all things built up. Let no one seek his own good, but the good of his neighbor. Eat whatever is sold in the meat market without raising any questions on the ground of conscience. For the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. If one of the unbelievers invites you to dinner, and you are disposed to go, eat whatever is set before you without raising any question on the ground of conscience. But if someone says to you, this has been offered in sacrifice, then do not eat it. For the sake of the one who informed you, and for the sake of the conscience, I do not mean your conscience, but his. For why should my liberty be determined by someone else's conscience? If I partake with thankfulness, why am I denounced because of that for which I give thanks? So whether you eat or drink, or whatever you do, do all for the glory of God. Give no offense to Jews or to the Greeks, or the church of God, just as I try to please everyone in everything I do, not seeking my own advantage, but that of many, that they may be saved. Be imitators of me as I am of Christ. Now I commend you, because you remember me in everything, and maintain the traditions even as I deliver them to you. But I want you understand that the head of every man is Christ, and the head of a wife is her husband, and the head of Christ is God. Every man who prays or prophesies with his head covered dishonors his head, but every wife who prays or prophesies with her head uncovered dishonors her head, since it is the same as if her head were shaven. For if a wife will not cover her head, then she should cut her hair short. But since it is disgraceful for a wife to cut off her hair or shave her head, let her cover her head. For a man ought not to cover his head, since he is the image and glory of God. But woman is from the glory of man. For man was not made from woman, but woman from man. Neither was a man created for woman, but woman for man. That is why a wife ought to have a symbol of authority on her head, because of the angels. Nevertheless, in the Lord, woman is not independent of man, nor man of woman. For as woman was made for man, so man is now born of woman. And all things are from God. Judge for yourselves. Is it proper for a wife to pray to God with her head uncovered? Does not nature itself teach you that a man wears his hair long, it's a disgrace for him? But if a woman has her hair long, it is her glory. For her hair is given to her for a covering. If anyone is inclined to be contentious, we have no such practice, nor do the churches of God. 
But in the following instructions, I do not commend you, because when you come together, it is not for the better, but for the worse. For in the first place, when you come together as a church, I hear that there are divisions among you, and I believe it in part. For there must be factions among you in order that those who are genuine among you may be recognized. When you come together, it is not the Lord's Supper that you eat. For in eating, each one goes ahead with his own meal. One goes hungry, another gets drunk. What? Do you not have houses to eat and drink in? Are you despising the church of God and humiliate those who have nothing? What shall I say to you? Shall I commend you in this? No, I will not. For I have received from the Lord what I also delivered to you. The Lord Jesus, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, he also took the cup, after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Whoever therefore eats the bread or drinks the cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner will be guilty concerning the body and blood of the Lord. Let a person examine himself then and so eat of the bread and drink of the cup. For the body eats and drinks judgment on himself. That is why many of you are weak and ill, and some have died. But if we judged ourselves truly, we would not be judged. But when we are judged by the Lord, we are disciplined so that we may not be condemned along with the world. So then, my brothers, when you come together to eat, wait for one another. If anyone is hungry, let him eat at home, so that when you come together it will not be for judgment. About the other things, I will give directions when I come. Chapter 12 now concerning spiritual gifts, brothers, I do not want you to be uninformed. You know that when you were pagans, you were led astray to mute idols. However, you were led. Therefore, I want you to understand that no one speaking in the Spirit of God ever says Jesus is accursed, and no one can say Jesus is Lord, except in the Holy Spirit. Now, there are varieties of gifts, but the same Spirit. And there are varieties of service, but the same Lord. And there are varieties of activities, but it is the same God who empowers them all and everyone. To each is given the manifest station of the Spirit for the common good. For to one is given through the Spirit the utterance of wisdom, and to another the utterance of knowledge, according to the same Spirit. To another faith by the same Spirit, to another gifts of healing by the one Spirit, to another the working of miracles, to another prophecy, to another the ability to distinguish between spirits, to another various kinds of tongues, to another the interpretation of tongues. All these are empowered by one and the same spirit, who apportions to each one individually as he wills. For just as the body 
is one and has many members, and all the members of the body, though many, are one body, so it is with Christ. For in one spirit we were all baptized into one body. Jews are Greeks, slaves are free, and all were made to drink of one spirit. For the body does not consist of one member, but of many. If the foot should say, Because I am not a hand, I do not belong to the body, that would not make it any less a part of the body. And if the ear should say, Because I am not an eye, I do not belong to the body, that would not make it any less a part of the body. If the whole body were an eye, where would be the sense of hearing? If the whole body were an ear, where would be the sense of smell? But as it is, God arranged the members in the body, each one of them as he chose. If all were a single member, where would be the body? As it is, there are many parts, yet one body. The eye cannot say to the hand, I have no need of you, nor again the head to the feet. I have no need of you. On the contrary, the parts of the body that seem to be weaker are indispensable. And on those parts of the body that we think less honorable, we bestow the greater honor, and our unpresentable parts are treated with greater modesty, which our more presentable parts do not require. But God has so composed the body, giving greater honor to the part that left it, that there may be no division in the body, but that the members may have the same care for one another. If one member suffers, all suffer together. If one member is honored, all rejoice together. Now you are the body of Christ and individually members of it. And God has appointed in the church first apostles, second prophets, third teachers, then miracles, then gifts of healing, helping, administrating, and various kinds of tongues. Are all apostles? Are all prophets? Are all teachers? Do all work miracles? Do all possess gifts of healing? Do all speak with tongues? Do all interpret? Chapter 13 And if I speak in the tongue of men and of angels, but have not love, I am a noisy gong or a clanging cymbal. And if I have prophetic powers and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have all faith, so as to remove mountains, but have not love, I am nothing. If I give away all I have, and deliver up my body to be burned, but have not love, I gain nothing. Love is patient, love is kind, love does not envy or boast, it is not arrogant or rude. It does not insist on its own way. It is not irritable or resentful. It does not rejoice at wrongdoing, but rejoices with the truth. Love bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Love never ends. As for prophecies, they will pass away. As for tongues, they will cease. As for knowledge, it will pass away. For we know in part, and we prophesy in part. But when the perfect comes, the partial will pass away. When I was a child, I reasoned like a child. When I became a man, I gave up childish ways. For now we see in a mirror dimly. But then, face to face. Now I know in part, then I shall know fully, 
Leave them as I have been fully known. So now faith, hope, and love abide, these three, but the greatest of these is love. Chapter 14 Pursue love and earnestly desire the spiritual gifts, especially that you may prophesy. For one who speaks in a tongue speaks not to men but to God, for no one understands him, but he utters mysteries in the spirit. On the other hand, the one who prophesies speaks to people for their upbuilding and encouragement and consolation. The one who speaks in a tongue builds up himself, but the one who prophesies builds up the church. Now I want you all to speak in tongues, but even more to prophesy. The one who prophesies is greater than the one who speaks in tongues, unless someone interprets, so that the church may be built up. Now, brothers, if I come to you speaking in tongues, how will I benefit you unless I bring you some revelation or knowledge or prophecy or teaching? If even lifeless instruments such as the flute or the harp do not give distinct notes. How will anyone know what is played? And if the bugle gives an indistinct sound, who will get ready for battle? So with yourselves, if your tongue, you utter speech that is intelligible, how will anyone know what is said? For you will be speaking into the air. There are doubtless many different languages in the world and none is without meaning. But if I do not know the meaning of the language, I will be a foreigner to the speaker, and the speaker a foreigner to me. So with yourself, since you are eager for manifestations of the Spirit, strive to excel in building up the church. Therefore, one who speaks in a tongue should pray for the power to interpret. For if I pray in a tongue, my spirit prays, but my mind is unfruitful. What am I to do? I will pray with my spirit, but I will pray with my mind also. I will sing praise with my spirit, but I will sing praise with my mind also. Otherwise, if you give thanks with your spirit, how can anyone in the position of an outsider say, Amen to your thanksgiving, when he does not know what you are saying. For you may be giving thanks well enough, but the other person is not being built up. I thank God that I speak in tongues more than all of you. Nevertheless, in church I would rather speak five words with my mind in order to instruct others than ten thousand words in a tongue. Brothers, do not be children in your thinking, be infants in evil, but in your thinking be mature. In the law it is written, by people of strange tongues and by lips of foreigners will I speak to this people, and even then they will not listen to me, says the Lord. Thus tongues are a sign not for believers, but for unbelievers while prophecy is a sign not for unbelievers, but for believers. If therefore the whole church comes together, and all speak in tongues, and outsiders or unbelievers enter, will they not say that you are out of your minds? But if all prophesy, and an unbeliever or an outside enters, he is convinced by all. He is called to account by all. The secrets of his heart are disclosed, and so, falling on his face, he will worship God and declare that God is really among you. When then, brothers, when you come together, each one has a hymn, a lesson, a revelation, a tongue, or an interpretation, let all things be done for building up. If any speak in a tongue, let there be only two, 
or at most three, and each in turn, and let someone interpret. But if there is no one to interpret, let each of them keep silent in church and speak to himself and to God. Let two or three prophets speak and let the others weigh what is said. If a revelation is made to another sitting there, let the first be silent, for you can all prophesy one by one, so that all may learn and all be encouraged. And the spirits of prophets are subject to prophets. For God is not a God of confusion, but of peace. As in all the churches of the saints, the women should keep silent in the churches, for they are not permitted to speak, but should be in submission, as the law also says. If there is anything they desire to learn, let them ask their husbands at home, for it is shameful for a woman to speak in church. Or was it from you that the word of God came, or are you the only ones it has reached? If anyone thinks that he is a prophet or spiritual, he should acknowledge that the things I am writing to you are a command of the Lord. If anyone does not recognize this, he is not recognized. So my brothers earnestly desire to prophesy and do not forbid speaking in tongues, but all things should be done decently and in order. Chapter 15 now I remind you, brothers, of the gospel I preach to you, which you received, in which you stand, and by which you are being saved. If you hold fast to the word I preach to you, unless you believed in vain. For I deliver to you as of first importance what I also received that Christ died for our sins in accordance with the scriptures, that he was buried, that he was raised on the third day in accordance with the scriptures, and that he appeared to Cephas, then to the twelve, then he appeared to more than five hundred brothers at one time, most of whom are still alive, though, some have fallen asleep. Then he appeared to James, then to all the apostles. Last of all, as to one untimely born, he appeared also to me. For I am the least of the apostles, unworthy to be called an apostle, because I persecuted the church of God. But by the grace of God I am what I am, and his grace toward me was not in vain. On the contrary, I worked harder than any of them, though it was not I but the grace of God that was with me. Whether then it was I or they, so we preached and so you believed. Now if Christ is proclaimed as raised from the dead, how can some of you say that there is no resurrection of the dead? But if there is no resurrection of the dead, then not even Christ has been raised. And if Christ has not been raised, then our preaching is in vain and your faith is in vain. We are even found to be misrepresenting God because we testified about God that he raised Christ, whom he did not raise, if it is true, that the dead were not raised. For if the dead are not raised, not even Christ has been raised. And if Christ has not been raised, your faith is futile, and you are still in your sins. Then those also who have fallen asleep in Christ have perished. If in Christ we have hope, in this life only we are of all people most to be pitied. But in fact, Christ has been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. For as by a man came death, by a man has also come the resurrection of the dead. For as in Adam all die, so also in Christ shall all be made alive. 
but each has its own order. Christ the first fruits, then at his coming those who belong to Christ. Then comes the end when he delivers the kingdom of God, the Father after destroying every rule and every authority and every power, for he must reign until he has put all his enemies under his feet. But when it says, all things are put in subjection, it is plain that he is accepted who put all things in subjection under him. When all things are subjected to him, then the Son himself will also be subjected to him who put all things in subjection under him, that God may be all in all. Otherwise, what do people mean by being baptized on behalf of the dead? If the dead are not raised at all, why are people baptized under their behalf? Why are we in danger every hour? I protest, brothers, by my pride in you, which I have in Christ Jesus our Lord. I die every day. What do I gain if, humanly speaking, I fought with beasts at Ephesus? If the dead are not raised, let us eat and drink, for tomorrow we die. Do not be deceived. Bad company ruins good morals. Wake up from your drunken stupor, as is right, and do not go on sinning. For some have no knowledge of God. I say this to your shame. But someone will ask, how are the dead raised? With what kind of body do they come? You foolish person, what you sow does not come to life unless it dies. And what you sow is not the body that is to be, but a bare kernel, perhaps of wheat or of some other grain. But God gives it a body as he has chosen, and to each kind of seed its own body. For not all flesh is the same, but there is one kind for humans, another for animals, another for birds, and another for fish. There are heavenly bodies and earthly bodies, but the glory of the heavenly is one of a kind, and the glory of the earthly is of another. There is one glory of the sun, and another glory of the moon, and another glory of the stars, for stars differ from star and glory. So it is with the resurrection of the dead. What is sown is perishable, what is raised is imperishable. It is sown in dishonor, it is raised in glory. It is sown in weakness, it is raised in power. It is sown in a natural body, it is raised a spiritual body. If there is a natural body, there is also a spiritual body. Thus it is written, the first man, Adam, became a living being. The last Adam became a life-giving spirit. But it is not the spiritual that is first, but the natural, and then the spiritual. The first man was from the earth, a man of dust. The second man is from heaven. As was the man of dust, so also are those who are of the dust. And is the man of heaven, so also are those who are in heaven. Just as we have borne the image of the man of dust, we shall also bear the image of the man of heaven. I tell you, brothers, flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, nor does the perishable inherit the imperishable. Behold, I tell you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed in a moment. In the twinkling of an eye at the last trumpet, for the trumpet will sound and the dead will be raised imperishable, and we shall be changed. For this perishable body must put on the imperishable, 
in this mortal body must put on immortality. When the perishable puts on the imperishable, and the mortal puts on immortality, then shall come to pass the saying that is written, Death is swallowed up in victory. O oh, death, where is your victory? O oh, death, where is your sting? The sting of death is sin, and the power of sin is the law. But thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, my beloved, be steadfast, immovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, knowing that in the Lord your labor is not in vain. Chapter 16 Now concerning the collection for the saints, as I directed the churches of Galatia, so you also are to do. On the first day of every week, each of you is to put something aside and store it up as he may prosper, so that there will be no collecting when I come. And when I arrive, I will send those whom you accredit by letter to carry your gift to Jerusalem. If it seems advisable that I should go also, they will accompany me. I will visit you after passing through Macedonia, for I intend to pass through Macedonia and perhaps I will stay with you, or even spend the winter, so that you may help me on my journey wherever I go. For I do not want to see you now just in passing. I hope to spend some time with you if the Lord permits. But I will stay in Ephesus until Pentecost, for a wide door for effective work has opened to me, and there are many adversaries. When Timothy comes, see that you put him at ease among you, for he is doing the work of the Lord as I am. So let no one despise him. Help him on his way in peace, that he may return to me. I am expecting him with the brothers. Now concerning our brother Apollos, I strongly urged him to visit you with the other brothers but it was not at all his will to come. He will come when he has an opportunity. Be watchful, stand firm in the faith, act like men, be strong, let all you do be done in love. Now I urge you, brothers, you know that the household of Stephanus were the first converts in Achaia, and that they have devoted themselves to the service of the saints. Be subject to such as these, as to every fellow worker and laborer. I rejoice at the coming of Stephanus and Fortunatus and Achaeus because they have made up for your absence, for they refreshed my spirit as well as yours. Give recognition to such men. The churches of Asia send you greetings. Aquila and Prisca, together with the church in their house, send you hearty greetings in the Lord. All the brothers send you greetings, greet one another with a holy kiss. I, Paul, write these greetings with my own hand. If anyone has no love for the Lord, let him be accursed. Our Lord, come. The grace of the Lord Jesus be with you. My love be with you all in Christ Jesus. Amen. Come to me, all who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. He says, Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me. For I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. Cast your burden upon the Lord, and he will sustain you. He will never allow the righteous to be shaken. Surely he will never be shaken, the 
righteous man will be remembered forever. The Lord is gracious and righteous. Our God is full of compassion. The Lord protects the unwary. When I was brought low, he saved me. Return to your rest, my soul, for the Lord has been good to you. My help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. He will not let you fall. Your guardian will not sleep. Indeed, the guardian of Israel never rests or sleeps. The Lord is your guardian. The Lord is the shade over your right hand. But you have made me happier than they will ever be with all their wine and grain. When I go to bed, I sleep in peace, because, Lord, you keep me safe. But you, Lord, protect me. You bring me honor. You bring me hope. I will pray to the Lord, and he will answer me from his holy mountain. I can lie down to rest and know that I will wake up because the Lord covers and protects me so I will not be afraid of my enemies even if thousands of them surround me. Though he falls, he will not be overwhelmed for the Lord is holding his hand I have set the Lord always before me, because he is at my right hand. I shall not be moved. He only is my rock and my salvation. He is my defense. I shall not be greatly moved. But you, Lord, are a shield around me, my glory. The one who lifts my head high. For surely you, O Lord, bless the righteous. You surround them with the shield of your favor. Then Jacob awoke from his sleep and said, Surely the Lord is in this place. And I, I even wasn't aware of it. The Lord is my strength and my shield. My heart trusts in him, and I am helped. Therefore my heart rejoices, and I give thanks to him with my song. The Lord will guard your going out and your coming in, from this time forth and forever. So do not fear, I am with you. Do not be dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you and help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. The Lord is near to the brokenhearted and saves the crushed in spirit. The Lord is near to everyone who prays to him, to every faithful person who prays to him. Can any hide himself in secret places that I shall not see him? said the Lord. Do not I fill heaven and earth, said the Lord. But whoever listens to me will live in safety and be at ease without fear of them. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Call to me, and I will answer you will tell you great and hidden things that you have not known. Whoever dwells in the shelter of the Most High will rest in the shadow of the Almighty. I will say to the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust. Surely He will save you from the fowler's snare and from the deadly pestilence. Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. I do not give to you as the world gives. 
Do not let your hearts be troubled, and do not be afraid. Offer the sacrifices of the righteous and trust in the Lord. Trust in Him at all times, O people. Pour out your hearts before Him. God is our refuge. Free my soul from prison, that I may praise your name. The righteous will gather around me because of your goodness to me. Let me hear of your unfailing love each morning, for I am trusting you. Show me where to walk, for I give myself to you. Rejoice, the soul of thy servant, for unto thee, O Lord, do I lift up my soul. In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy path. My eyes are awake before the watches of the night, that I may meditate on your promises. In peace I will lie down sleep, for you alone, O Lord, will keep me safe. Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. The Lord gives his people strength. The Lord blesses his people with peace. When I remember you on my bed, I think of you through the watches of the night. How precious to me are your thoughts, God. How vast is the sum of them. Thou will keep him in perfect peace, whose mind is stayed on thee, because he trusteth in thee. Trust ye in the Lord forever. For in the Lord Jehovah is everlasting strength. And midnight I will rise to give thanks unto thee because of thy righteous judgments. In the night, O oh Lord, I remember your name, that I may keep your law. My soul longs for you in the night. Indeed, my spirit seeks you at dawn. For when your judgments come upon the earth, the people of the world learn righteousness. Now may the Lord of peace himself give you peace at all times and in every way. The Lord be with all of you. Peace to the brothers and love with faith from God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Who of you, by worrying, can add a single hour to his life? Do not worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything. Tell God what you need and thank him for all he has done. In the Lord I take refuge. So how can you say to me, flee to your mountain like a bird? But my eyes are fixed on you, O God, the Lord. In you I seek refuge. Do not leave my soul defenseless. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life. Whom shall I dread? The Lord is my strength and my song, and he has become my salvation. He is my God, and I will praise him. My Father's God, and I will exalt him. The Lord is the strength of his people, a stronghold of salvation for his anointed. Finally, brothers and sisters, rejoice. Strive for full restoration. Encourage one another. Be of one mind. Live in peace. And the God of love and peace be with you. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you. 
and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace. Salvation belongs to the Lord. May your blessing be on your people. The salvation of the righteous is from the Lord. He is their stronghold in time of trouble. The Lord is a refuge for the oppressed, a stronghold in times of trouble. You are my hiding place. You protect me from trouble. You surround me with songs of deliverance. He put a new song in my mouth, a hymn of praise to our God. Many will see and fear and put their trust in the Lord. But I have trusted in your loving devotion. My heart will rejoice for your salvation. For you are God, O Sovereign Lord. Your words are truth, and you have promised these good things to your servant. There remains then a Sabbath rest for the people of God. For anyone who enters God's rest also rests from their works, just as God did from his. Let us, therefore, make every effort to enter that rest, so that no one will perish by following their example of disobedience. You will keep in perfect peace those whose minds are steadfast, because they trust in you. Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. By the seventh day, God had finished the work he had been doing. So on the seventh day, he rested from all his work. Then God blessed the seventh day and made it holy because on it he had rested from all the work of creating all he had done. Remember the Sabbath day by keeping it holy. Six days you shall labor and do all your work, but the seventh day is a Sabbath to the Lord your God. On it you shall not do any work, neither you nor your son nor daughter, nor your male or female servants, or your animals, nor any foreigner residing in your towns. On the day your Lord gives you relief from your suffering and turmoil, and from the harsh labor forced on you, you will take up this taunt against the king of Babylon. How the oppressor has come to an end. How his fury has ended. I said, oh, that I had the wings of a dove. I would fly away and be at rest. Then, because so many people were coming and going that they did not even have a chance to eat, he said to them, Come with me by yourselves to a quiet place and get some rest. Then he said to them, This Sabbath was made for man, not man for the Sabbath. The Lord replied, my presence will go with you, and I will give you rest. The righteous perish, and no one takes it to heart. The devout are taken away, and no one understands that the righteous are taken away to be spared from evil. Those who walk uprightly enter into peace. They find rest as they lie in death. The Lord is my shepherd, I lack nothing. He makes me lie down in green pasture. He leads me beside quiet waters. He refreshes my soul. He guides me along the path for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You 
anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. Surely your goodness and love will follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Be still before the Lord and wait patiently for him. Do not fret when people succeed in their ways, when they carry out those wicked schemes. I have told you these things so that in me you may have peace. In this world you will have trouble, but take heart, I have overcome the world. For the one who has entered his rest has himself also rested from his works, as God did from his. For we who have believed enter that rest, just as he said, As I swore in my wrath, they shall not enter my rest. Although his works were finished from the foundation of the world, and the Lord gave them rest on every side, according to all that he had sworn to their fathers. And no one of all their enemies stood before them. The Lord gave all their enemies into their hands. Then my people will live in a peaceful habitation, and in secure dwelling and in undisturbed resting places. But now the Lord my God has given me rest on every side, there is neither adversary nor misfortune. And give him no rest until he establishes and makes Jerusalem a praise in the earth. Then you would trust because there is hope, and you would look around and rest securely. But during the seventh year the land shall have a Sabbath rest, a Sabbath to the Lord. You shall not sow your field, no prune your vineyard. There is no peace for the wicked, says the Lord. My soul wait in silence for God only, for my hope is in him. And he said, My presence shall go with you, and I will give you rest. For thus the Lord God, the Holy One of Israel, said, In repentance and rest you will be saved in quietness and in trust, in your strength, but you are not willing. So there remains a Sabbath rest for the people of God. Return to your rest, O oh my soul, for the Lord has dealt bountifully with you. In peace I will both lie down and sleep, for you alone, O Lord, make me dwell in safety. For they cannot sleep unless they do evil, and they are robbed of sleep unless they make someone stumble. For you have not as yet come to the resting place and the inheritance which the Lord your God has given you, so that your faith would not rest on the wisdom of men, but on the power of and he said to them, Come away by yourselves to a secluded place, and rest a while. I will not give sleep to my eyes, or slumber to my eyelids. And then he said to them, This is what the Lord meant. Tomorrow is a Sabbath observance, a holy Sabbath to the Lord. Bake what you will, bake and boil what you will boil, and all that is left over put aside and kept until morning. Thus says the Lord, the people who survived the sword found grace in the wilderness, Israel when it went to find its rest. This is my resting place forever, here I will dwell, for I have desired it. The whole earth is at rest and is quiet. They break forth into shouts of joy. Arise and go, for this is no place of rest, because of the uncleanness that brings on destruction, a painful destruction. He said to them, Here is your rest, give rest to the weary, and here is repose, 
but they would not listen. There the wicked cease from raging, and there the weary are at rest. Thus says the Lord, Heaven is my throne, and the earth is my footstool. Where then is a house you could build for me, and where is a place that I may rest? For the scepter of wickedness shall not rest upon the land of the righteous, so that the righteous will not put forth their hands to do wrong. I said, oh, that I had wings like a dove. I would fly away and be at rest. So he answered the angel of the Lord, who was standing among the myrtle trees, and said, We have patrolled the earth. And behold, all the earth is peaceful and quiet. Behold, a son will be born to you who shall be a man of rest, and I will give him rest from all his enemies on every side, for his name shall be Solomon, and I will give peace and quiet to Israel in his days. One hand full of rest is better than two fists full of labor, and striving after wind. Until the Lord gives your brothers rest as he gives you, and they also possess the land which the Lord your God is giving them, then you shall return to your own land, and possess that which Moses, the servant of the Lord, gave you beyond the Jordan toward the sunrise. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, and self-control. Against such things there is no law. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. You will keep in perfect peace those whose minds are steadfast, because they trust in you. The Lord gives strength to his people, and the Lord blesses his people with peace. Cast all your anxiety on him because he cares for you. If it is possible, as far it depends on you, live at peace with everyone. The Lord of God will soon crush Satan under your feet. The grace of our Lord Jesus be with you. Great peace have those who love your law, and nothing can make them stumble. Lord, you establish peace for us. All that we have accomplished, you have done for us. Come to me, all who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. For God is not a God of disorder, but of peace, as in the congregations of the Lord's people. They must turn from evil and do good. They must seek peace and pursue it. I have said these things to you, that in me you may have peace. In the world you will have tribulation, but take heart, I have overcome the world. In peace I will both lie down and sleep, for you alone, O Lord, make me dwell in safety. In his days may the righteous flourish and peace abound till the moon be no more. And he said, O man, greatly loved, fear not, peace be with you, be strong and of good courage. And as he spoke to me, I was strengthened and said, Let my Lord speak, for you have strengthened me. And the effect of righteousness will be peace, and the result of righteousness, quietness and trust forever. How beautiful on the mountains are the feet of those who bring good news, who proclaim peace, who bring good tidings, who proclaim salvation, who say to Zion, your God reigns, but he was pierced for our transgressions, he was crushed for our iniquities, the 
punishment that brought us peace was on him, and by his wounds we are healed. Long life is in her right hand. In her left hand are riches and honor. Her ways are ways of pleasantness, and all her paths are peace. She is a tree of life to those who lay hold of her. Those who hold fast are called blessed. Deceit is in the heart of those who devise evil, but those who plan peace have joy. Peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you. Not as the world gives do I give it to you. Let not your hearts be troubled, neither let them be afraid. Therefore, since we have been justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. May the God of hope fill you with joy and peace in believing, so that by the power of the Holy Spirit you may abound in hope. For the kingdom of God is not a matter of eating and drinking, but of righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Spirit. Finally, brothers, rejoice. Aim for restoration. Comfort one another. Agree with one another. Live in peace. And the God of love and peace will be with you. Amen.
Or I 
thoughts of God, except the Spirit of God. Now we have received not the Spirit of the world, but the Spirit who is from God, that we might understand the things freely given to us by God.
is worth it all. The days are passing.